What is going on everybody, how are we all doing and welcome back today to the Manchester City career mode on FIFA 17. Today is episode number 11 and I've got to say again a huge thank you for all the comments, likes, support, everything from on the last video. And once again if you could smash a thumbs up on this video that would be absolutely amazing. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel as well. And uh, again we've got three games to cover today and I've got the results back from what you guys wanted to see as far as the transfer window goes. Now, I'm going to give you the answer to the questions I asked last week or last episode. And I've also got another question for you. Now, the big question was right back and left back. Of course, we've got Angelino and Mafia playing. Mafia's out injured at the moment, so Zabaleta's coming. Zabaleta will not be going anywhere. A couple of you are saying, don't sell Zabaleta. He's a Man City legend. He will be playing as a backup player. Uh, on the bench because he can play right back and CDM which is kind of useful but actually going to be going in for however Jose Goya at left back he was the most popular choice and then Hector Bellerin at right back we're then going to be rotating mainly between Angelino, Mafia, Bellerin and Gaia assuming we can get them all in uh, then both in sorry and then we'll Zabaleta like so I'll be used as a rotation option at right back and CDM if we get injuries or if we need to call upon him but um, the next question I've got to ask you is right now in the squad we've got two strikers we've got Sergio Aguero obviously is our number one striker. Kalicha Ikiyanacho is our backup striker. We have nothing else after that. So I was thinking if we can afford it well, with the sales of people, because another common thing you were all saying was when you bring in Gaia and Bellerin, make sure to trade out Sanit and Kalicia, which is what the plan is. If we can raise funds somewhere else, for example, I'm thinking of selling, for, selling Fernando, should we get another striker? Now, I don't want someone that's going to stop the progress of Ikiyanacho, but I want someone that if we get a couple of injuries or an injury that can be there on the bench to do the job. Maybe like an Adariz, a Mario Gomez, a Carlos Tevez, that kind of player. So let me know what you think of that and what kind of players you'd recommend. Because I want someone that's they're probably going to be quite an old striker, but someone that can still come in and do a job if that makes sense. So let me know your recommendations for that. As I've already mentioned, we've got three games for you as always in today's episode. We're kicking things off in the Champions League with a game against Young, against young Boys. And then we play Leicester and Watford respectively in the league. Um... The first game, actually, we're going to simulate because I'll show you the quickly now the uh, the group stage table. As we covered, I don't know if it, I think it was a couple of episodes ago. Real Madrid have already been knocked out, which is absolutely crazy. We're already through. Even if Young Boys beat us, unless they beat us like seven nil, which obviously isn't going to happen, we're actually already through. So we're going to simulate the first game, and then we're getting to our game against Leicester, followed by the game against Watford. So here we go, then, lads. We're going to sim this first game. I'm still keeping out the first team because there's a long break between this game and the Leicester game, and also we've got fantastic momentum going at the moment. We've got six wins on the trot. Hopefully we can continue that great form in today's episode. We're going to skip to the end and we come away with a very nice 2-0 win. Two goals actually from Leroy Sané which is pretty cool but um, no injuries as well, no suspensions which is always nice because when you see me like games that's something that can often happen. We're going to jump forward to the, to the Leicester game now. Any news here? No, nothing new. Nothing new at all. So let's jump forward to the Leicester game and uh, we'll sort out the team. So lads, we've arrived at game day for the Leicester game. We are away for this one going to the King Power Stadium. Not going to be easy. We've got had a couple of pieces of news since I last left here. Um, first one was the tournament prize money. We got 18 and a half million for getting to the Champions League group stage, which is pretty cool. The the uh, the draw has been done. We've actually got a very favourable draw. We're actually playing the stick cast in the first knockout stage of the Champions League, which is like I said, a fantastic, fantastic draw. But we don't play them for quite some time. It's all the way into February apparently when we play them, which seems a long gap. But um, apparently that's when it is. But we're going to get on with the Premier League now. We're going to have lots of Premier League matches in a row now up till that point. So hopefully you can see we've played 14 games so far. Still top by three points with a game in hand as well. So hopefully we can pull out that extend. Sorry, that's the right word. Extend our three-point gap at the top. And uh, hopefully get three points off Leicester. So lads, like I said, there was quite a big gap between the last game, which was against the Young Boys, to so this Leicester game. So most of the first team is still on full fitness, which is absolutely fantastic. We are, though... Going to bring in Mr. Tony Cruz for his first start in a long, long time. We're going to take out David Silva, bring him into the fray, and hopefully that can just give us that extra bit of firepower in the middle of the pitch. So um, as you can see, the lineup is our strongest possible 11, really, excluding Mafio, who's out injured. And Zabalet is technically better than him, if that makes sense. But it's going to be Bravo, Angelino, Company, Stones, Zabalet, Cruz, Gundogan, De Bruyne, and then Sane, Aguero, and Sterling leading the line. Let's see if we can pick up three points. And, I mean, the form lately has been unreal. Hopefully, we can just keep that going. Here we are, then, lads. We're at the King Power Stadium, taking on Leicester City. Of course, last year's Premiership winners, Premier League winners, absolutely insane that was. I don't think they're going to manage to do the same this year, as it's uh, become evidence over the first few games already, and we're not even that far into the league. But um, it's going to be interesting to see if on FIFA they've brought anyone in being able to use the sort of the pull of having just won the Premier League so you can see there though the league table Leicester City uh, currently sitting in 14th place so nowhere near being able to replicate 
their uh, success of last season. We're, of course, top of the league. But like I said, it'd be interesting to see if they brought anyone in. Got to be careful here. All Brighton getting forward. Angelino's got to track him. Oh, my God. We've been absolutely pulled open with the first attack of the game from Leicester. Angelino and able to stop the cross. And then Okazaki gets in ahead of the defender. And we are instantly 1-0 down. This is very reminiscent, actually, of the Burnley game in the last episode. So hopefully it can have the same outcome because we won that in the very last minute. But um, not the start we wanted again. We still don't seem so secure at the back when we've got Angelino playing there. So hopefully, like I say, we can get him up, get him higher rated. But until that point, we really could do with getting Gaia in here. Well in. Great tackle. Come on, come on. Look at Raheem. Raheem is making waves. Raheem is in on goal. He's been fantastic for us this season. And he's done it again, lads. 1-1. One, one, pretty much straight back into the game. Raheem Sterling with the goal. He won it back in a fantastic position in the middle of the park. And when Raheem gets in behind that defence, there is no one that's catching up to him. And it's a really tidy finish. That was the only question. Was he going to be able to finish it? And he certainly could. He's been so good for us this season. Straight back into the game, lads. 1-1. One, one. Can Cruz carry on his run here? He can. We need the runner. We need the runner. De Bruyne is the runner. We picked him out. Spin inside De Bruyne. He has done. Drop back inside. Still De Bruyne. Oh, it's blocked out. Still going there. We're going to lay this off. Ilkay Gundogan. We know he's got the long shot in his locker, but that is not the one. Ah, oh, they've played in the behind really well there. It's a great save. Bravo. Oh, it's fell back to them. I swear to you, lads. Leicester have had two shots. Well, three really, because Bravo saved the initial one there and have scored two goals. It's been just... Oh, we were really lucky. That's a great ball in behind, to be fair. It's a good save, bravo. No one reacted quick enough. And it's gone again. We pulled it back straight away before. We've looked comfortable since. And all of a sudden, we're 2-1 down. I played. De, De Bruyne. Come on. Kevin De Bruyne. Get in there, lads. It's 2-2. I am in the zone right now. This has been a crazy, crazy match. We're just about to get to half-time. It's 2-2. I feel like... It's been crazy and very clinical from both teams. I think we've only had four shots and we've scored a couple of goals. And Leicester have also probably had two, maybe three shots and scored a couple of goals as well. So everyone been very clinical. Not a great game for the goalkeepers right now, but 2-2. I'm just glad we managed to bring this back before half-time. So there's the half-time whistle, lads. And like I said, when we scored our second goal, the equaliser, crazy half. Not many chances, but four goals. And that's all you can say, really. Second half, we have, well, for the main part, we controlled that first half, like I say. And, um... Hopefully, you can see there, we've had three shots, three on target, and two goals. Sorry, that's Leicester, we've had three shots, three on target, two goals. This, the, one of the shots that wasn't a goal was the save that led to the goal. We've had five shots, four on target, two goals. So, very, very, not many chances and lots of goals. So, hopefully, I feel like I've been in control of the game. We can keep that up and we can get the win here. He's looking after the ball. It's come down to Angelino. De Bruyne's here. Need to watch De Bruyne for that long shot. Nice dribbling. Get out of the way. Yes, lads. That's a fantastic goal. 3-2. Sergio Aguero, I believe it is, that's put it in there. Not, what? Tony Cruz. I did not realise that was Tony Cruz. I just I just assume when someone's in the central and he's up top, it's going to be Aguero. But Tony Cruz, what a little dribble that was. De Bruyne finds him. Nice touch there. Does well to avoid Sane more than anything else. His German comrade. And we make it 3-2. Tony Cruz with the goal back on his first start since coming back from injury. What a finish that is. That's the other reason I assumed it was Aguero. What a finish. 3-2, come on lads. So about 10 minutes ago, lads, we're going to use our last couple of changes. We're actually taking off De Bruyne and Sterling and bringing on Ichi and Atta to find that right wing position for a bit more pace on the counter-attack, a bit more energy. And we're also going to bring on Garcia, a player that a few of you guys wanted me to give some more game time. I am subbing him on in a lot of these games just to, you know, try and get his uh, rating up a little bit for some game time. So hopefully he can do the job again today. He's done well there. Can we find the man in the middle? We can. First time. Oh, he's put it wide. That could have been the game sealer. And it's Young Garcia with the chance as well. Just why? What a chance that was. There it is, lads. There's the four-time whistle. We do come away with a 3-2 victory. It was a crazy, crazy first half. Only the one goal in the second half, and that was all it required to get the three points. Like I said, we rotated a little bit in that second half. Like the likes of Garcia coming on, Ikea Nacho. And uh, it ended up being pretty comfortable. It was just a manic, manic first half. And um, yeah, three points, what more can you ask for? Let's have a look at the league table, because I think we've pulled our, uh, our advantage at the top now to six points. And then we'll jump into the last game of the episode, which I think is against Watford. So here we are then, lads. We're at the final game of today's episode. We're playing against Watford. We are at home. And as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, we have in fact extended our lead at the top to six points going into this game, which is absolutely fantastic. After we have played the Watford game, I'll show you the full table 
top scores, all that kind of stuff, because I've not really shown you that since we started the series, and a few people want to see, like, how the league's coming on, who's playing well, that kind of stuff. We have had a bit of news as far as scout reports come back for some of these players. Obviously, these are not all players that we're going to go for, but Jose Goya is the man we want to be looking at. He is valued at £13.5 million, rated 80, so he would be a very, very strong investment in his wage. He's only 23 and a half k so he's definitely the player that we're going to bring in log. So we also had scout reports back on a Semedo, who was someone that was recommended. He's a 76. Grimaldo, age 21, he's a 77. So Goya is definitely the strongest one there. And we also skated at Luke Shaw. Let's just have a look what they said about him. So there's Luke Shaw, lads. And as you can see, he is an 82, but he's on a lot of wages. He's on 79 grand. And he's valued at 20.5 million. Not to mention the fact that because he plays for Man United, they're going to want a lot of money for him as well. So as you all wanted, and as I think I favoured towards anyway, the one I was leaning towards, it's going to be Goya and Bellerin rotating alongside Angelino and Mafia. That's a really good young left-back, right-back cover situation we've got going on there, and hopefully the that can help shore up the defence a little bit. So we've made a few changes going into the Watford game. We actually had some uh, tired legs, particularly in the middle of the park, where we've brought in uh, Silva, Fernandinho, and most notably Garcia, who we're given a bit more game time, like I've already mentioned. Um, Sterling still starting on the right with Aguero up top, Nolito coming in on that left-hand side, and also Otamendi coming in in place of Vincent Company, who was also a little bit tired. I really wanted to play Cruz again, get some match fitness going, but because he's just come back from in that last game really took it out of him. He's on only on like half a bar as far as uh, fitness goes. So we're going to leave him on the bench. We've got a very strong bench as always. Hopefully though the starting eleven can get the job done. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Garcia can do from the uh, from the kickoff. Here we are. Then we are at the Etihad Stadium. Every time we're here, it seems to be a night game. I feel like we're always playing under the lights. But I suppose when we're playing in Europe, we do get a lot of sort of Monday night games, Sunday night games. So it is sort of to be expected to a certain extent. I was just saying about Suarez, uh, it's not Suarez, sorry, Garcia. I don't know if I called him Suarez before, but it was Garcia that I meant to say. Really looking forward to seeing what he can do as he's getting his first start of the career mode so far. He's a player with a lot of potential. He's playing that left-hand side of central midfield, which isn't ideal for him. He's more of a cam, but hopefully he can do well as sort of an attacking box-to-box -box midfielder. He's definitely got the... Uh, the potential to be a great player in that position, but like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how he does. Um, league table-wise, you can see we're still sitting very prettily at the top of the table. Six points clear. If we can keep up this form, it would be absolutely incredible. What for the team, though? They've got some dangerous players. The likes of Igalo's a good striker. Uh, Pereira's a very strong player. Always a success to play in him. A player with a lot of pace. And I do believe they've signed a couple of half-decent players as well. So it's not going to be an easy game. It's a game where we're at home and we will be expected to pick up all three points and that's what we need to be doing, lads. Come on. Nolito. The man inside here in Garcia. Spreads that really nicely to Zabaleta actually. Can we pick out the man? It's a great ball in. What a goal that is. I'll tell you something, lads. When Raheem Sterling is nodding in, you know it's got to be a fantastic cross and that is exactly what it was. What a ball from Pablo Zabaleta that is. My lord, look at that, just picks him out, you know, because of space in between the two centre-backs. Great glancing header, and I'll tell you something, Raheem does not score many of those. It was the young lad Garcia that found Zabaleta in all the space, but I'll tell you something, that ball in, you will not see a better cross than that this year. That is 1-0, and that is what this first half performance has warranted, because we have been dominant. There we are then, lads, it's half-time, we scored just before the break. It was very, very, very much deserved. We've been like, I mean, Watford have had two shots, I think both have come on the counter-attack, where we've just had so many men committed forward and have managed to find space, but with 1-0 up, Garcia's done well, the youngster, it's got to be said, and um, that ball from Zabaleta, what a cross that was, unbelievable stuff. Hopefully we can keep the puck the way we've been playing in the second half. If we do that, there's only one way this game's going, and that is ours. Come on. Find Aguero. It's a great turn from Aguero, come on. Sergio, he's blocked it away. Great turn, that was on the half turn, on the, on the shoulder of the defender, and um, like I said, the second half has been very different from the first. Watford really coming out to us this time. Come on, stop the cross. We're struggling to keep up, actually. We need the fresh legs back there, but we've made all the subs. What a take that is! Holy crap, you see that for a takedown by the Watford player? Who was that? Was that a Garlo? If he'd have scored that, that could have been Garlo the bloody season. There it is, lads. There's the full time whistle. Only a 1 0 win at home against Watford, but three points is three points. Um, First half, we were very, very, very dominant. Completely deserved to go into the break with that 1-0 lead. But second half, Watford came into it a lot more. They made the substitution at half-time. Bought on Pereira. They ended up bringing on Dini. It ended up being a very attacking outfit that they had out on the pitch. Caused us some problems, but we're still the dominant team and definitely 100% deserved the win. Raheem Sterling with another goal. He has been on fire for us. 
and that headed goal was what was going to earn us the three points in this game. So we're going to jump forward now. We're going to have a look at the league table, the top scorers, all that kind of thing, all that kind of stuff, like the, the clean sheets, all that information. And then we'll round off today's episode. So here's the league table at the end of episode number 11 of the series. As you can see, we've played 16 games in the Premier League, slowly approaching that halfway line mark now. And um, we're on 40 points. It's been a fantastic start, really. We've lost a couple of games, only draw one, but doing 13 games at this first 16 is absolutely superb. Everton and Liverpool still in second and third place. The two most of our teams doing very, very well. Everton, in fact, now got a three-point lead over Liverpool, but they have got a game in hand. Liverpool have. Uh, Hull City still hanging in there in that top four position of fourth. Um, Arsenal in fifth, Stoke, Crystal Palace, Spurs, Bournemouth, United in tenth, which is an absolutely shocking start to the season from then. Chelsea in eleventh, which is even worse. And um, yeah, it's a crazy, crazy league table. Burnley are propping up the table in twentieth position with Sunderland and surprisingly Southampton above them. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a muddle up of a table, really. Not what you'd expect at all, but we are top. Six points, six points clear. It's been fantastic start from us. Fantastic first half to the season. Let's have a look at the top scorers and clean sheets, all that stuff. See if we've got anybody up there. So you could say, quite surprisingly, lads, the top scorer in the Premier League is actually our very own Kevin De Bruyne. He's got 10 goals. Behind him is Santa Cazorla and Sergio Aguero. Aguero and De Bruyne have 100%. I mean, this confirms it, obviously. But they've been the two players scoring all the goals for us. Cazorla, you could say, is a surprise in, third, in second. Gradle and Klukas up there as well. This has been a very strange season, clearly. But um, assist-wise, it's Sergio Aguero that's topped by three assists. He's had a, had a fantastic season. Even when it seems like he's gone a couple of games without scoring, of course, he's been contributing this way as well. Jack Wilshere up there. De Bruyne, Fernandina. We really are thrown on all cylinders. And clean sheets-wise, we are top of that as well. So we really have been dominant for this first half of the season. And like I say, it's, it's not been perfect. We are, we've had some strange results. The loss to... Um, did we lose to West Brom, I think it was. That was a bit of a strange result. But you know what? We're integrating some younger players into the team. We're playing good football. And to be six points clear at almost the halfway line mark is absolutely superb. But uh, that's going to end up this episode, lads. I hope you all did enjoy it. As always, leave a big thumbs up on it if you did. Don't forget to let me know recommendations of some old but good strikers we can bring in in January for back up the locks of Mario Gomez and Adoriz are the first two that come to mind maybe even Tevez but he might be a bit more expensive but yeah let me know your suggestions for that down below lads and I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video have a fantastic rest of your night Nidge out Yo, his niche plays with big games and player views are getting insane. He entertains while he elevates his video quality resonates on career mode. He got lots of vids uploading off and he's rocking it. He's got the confidence in all his commentaries. Videos range, they often vary. Got need for speed and a road to glory. Just watching vids and you know the story. The content is underrated. I'm understating, so don't ignore the like and subscribe button to support the channel that keeps running. It takes one second, like it's free. It costs nothing. Peace.